God is wanting to position you, just like Pastor said. He's wanting to position you for the greater of him. And in order for that to happen, you're going to have to let go of some things to grab on to the greater things. Are you with me? Reality is nobody gets through life without getting their heart broken at one point or another. And usually we're brokenhearted because of the actions or lack of actions of another. Sometimes those actions or lack of actions are intentional and meant to hurt us. And sometimes they didn't mean to hurt us at all. And in fact, they may even be unaware of the effect that our encounter with them had on us. Some people are brokenhearted because they've experienced loss. Loss, not loss, loss. Some people are brokenhearted because their life just didn't turn out the way they thought it was going to go. But you know what? I, we looked last week at this scripture, Psalms 34, 18. It says, the Lord is nigh or near unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. You know, we looked last week that there are two sides of an incident that causes your broken heart. The first is that which was done to you. How many of you know you can't control that? Are you with me? You can't control what somebody does to you out of the blue. The second part of that is, though, is your response to it, and that really is the only thing you can control because life is going to happen. Jerks are going to happen. Mean people are going to happen. It just how, is how life is. Nobody gets out of life without getting hurt. Uh, and, and you know what? If somebody does hurt you, what are we supposed to do with that? We're supposed to give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. Romans 12, 19. It says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, and I will repay, saith the Lord. How many of you know he will take up your cause for you if you take that hurt situation and you give it up to God and you say, God, you saw. You know what happened. And I'm asking you to make this right by me. Now, how many of you know that takes a lot more faith than you just getting in there and handling your business? You know what I'm saying? Sometimes our flesh doesn't like that. We want the thrill of evening the score and one-upping the score. But it takes faith to just obey to just give it to God. Father, you saw and you know how they hurt me. You know, gosh, Lord, you know. I'm giving it to you, though, and I'm asking you to intervene. I want us to look at that out of the NIV version. It says, do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge and I will repay, says the Lord. Now listen, does God mean what he says? Does God lie? Can you trust him to do what he said? So if he said, don't take it into your own hands, give it to me, and I'll make it right by you, will he do it? He will. He will. Now listen, I'm not talking about not calling the police if someone is harming you or harming your children. I'm talking about your heart. I'm talking about you not just getting revenge because you're mad and you're hurt and you're upset. But there's nothing wrong with calling the police and stopping abuse and, and, and criminal behavior when it happens. All right? You can forgive them while they're doing their time. I'm talking about your heart, though. I'm talking about your heart. If it's a criminal act, call the police. But if not, guard your heart and protect it. And don't let anger and hatred and bitterness fester in your heart and cause you to strike out at people just because they struck out at you. We talked last week about forgiveness. Forgiveness is you choosing to let pass out of your life that which has so hurt and devastated you. When you hold on to unforgiveness, it ties you to the pain of that situation. Did you hear what I just said? Honey, come here. 
This isn't what I was going to do. How I, but come on, come up here. I need somebody I can shove around. If he did something to hurt me, y'all know Lord helped a man, right? But if he did something to hurt me and I get into un and I get into unforgiveness, then what happens is in in, in the in the realm of the spirit of the unseen, now I've got a hold of him because he owes me. He owes me. Now, how many of you know it's not possible for me to forget what he did when I'm doing this? It's not possible for me to get away from a toxic person when I'm doing this to them. Do you understand? Forgiveness is saying, you've hurt me enough. I'm not going to let you take another day of my life. I'm not going to let you steal. You're, you're dismissed. <laughs> Feels powerful up here today. No, I'm kidding. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> you need to forgive me. You have to get some for me. Um, <laughs> where am I going? Okay. Um, uh, okay. So, but but uh, your anger and your resentment and your unforgiveness holds you to the pain of that situation and to that toxic person. You know, the day has to come eventually when you just say, you've taken enough from me. I don't want you to be able to hurt me anymore. So I'm letting go, not because you deserve it, but because I deserve it. Because I deserve to be free. I deserve to be happy. I deserve to be able to sleep at night. I deserve to get off the blood pressure medicine. I deserve to get off the depression medicine or whatever it is that's going on in your life. You know, sometimes when, when God deals with us about forgiving, sometimes we think, well, Lord, if I forgive, it's like I'm saying what they did was okay. But how many of you know that's not true? What they did will never be okay. It'll never be okay. Forgiveness just means I'm not going to let you keep hurting me. Sometimes people have a hard time forgiving because they use anger for power. That anger and bitterness coursing through their bodies makes them feel strong and powerful. To me, it's a little bit like steroid use, which I've never used steroids. You can tell that by looking at me. But some athletes use anabolic steroids to artificially beef up their bodies and make them stronger than they would be if they were just working out. But what they don't realize is what a poison it is to their bodies and the devastating, ravaging effects it has on their minds and their bodies. Ultimately, that which they took to increase their strength ends up weakening their minds and bodies and oftentimes ends up in their death. In the moment, they feel powerful not realizing that that poison that they've taken in is slowly killing them. It's slowly weakening them and, and, and hurting their body to the point that they may not survive it. To me, that is exactly what unforgiveness does. In the moment, it may make you feel powerful because you're angry. But that anger and unforgiveness and bitterness is killing you on the inside. It is poisoning you. It is, it is ravaging you. And you don't even know it. I've had to tell young ministers, you can't use anger for power. They felt like they could only correct their people when they were mad. So they waited till they built up a head of steam and then they just let their people have it. No, you can correct out of rightness, out of moral, the, the moral correctness of your position is the strength you need to correct, not anger. Do you understand? Anger is terribly, terribly destructive when undealt with. 
That's what anger and unforgiveness does. In the moment, it makes you feel stronger and powerful, maybe even invincible, but it's poison that will eventually kill you. Listen, if somebody's done something to you, you must forgive them and stay free from it, not for their sakes, but for yours. But what if a broken heart is as a result of a loss? Maybe a loss of someone we love or a loss of a dream we had for our lives. Listen, eventually you're going to have to deal with what happened to you. I heard a story just yesterday about a minister. Someone asks, can you go to the psychiatric hospital and visit my sister? You know, she was suffering from terrible depression. And she, she I mean, it, it was depression to the point where she was literally unfunctional in life. And she was in this uh, mental institute, and they were considering, the doctors didn't even know what to do with her anymore to help her. And they were considering permanently, uh, you know, having her uh, committed to this mental institution permanently. And the minister said when he went in, he said, you could see depression on this lady. I mean, it was all over her. He said, I could see it visibly in her countenance. I could see it on her. And he said, laying there on her bedside was her Bible. He said, Lord, how did we get here? So he asked the lady, when, when did this terrible depression start? How did it happen? She took him back to when she was a teenager. She said, as a very young girl, she went out, did some things she ought not be doing, and ended up pregnant as a very young teenager. First, she had to go through the trauma of telling her boyfriend. Then she went through the trauma of telling her parents and his parents, who were both massively disappointed in them and did not take it well. Then she carried this baby to term, but gave birth to a baby who did not live. How many of you know that's a lot of trauma and drama for a middle schoolish age person? Then on top of it all, she lost her baby when she was just a baby herself. Worse yet, in trying to understand and figure out why this happened, she came to the wrong conclusion that God killed her baby as revenge on her for getting pregnant to begin with. Now on top of it all, she thought God was against her. That God took her child from her. She didn't know what you know, which is that God is good all the time. God doesn't steal. He doesn't kill. He doesn't destroy. He wanted to take that little girl in his arms. I guarantee you he did and love away that hurt. But instead, in her trying to figure out why this happened, how did I get here? What did I do wrong? She came to the conclusion that it must have been God. Now her devastation was even deeper because God's even against me. And she just became more and more depressed. She was angry at herself, angry at the boy, angry at her parents, angry at God, who she mistakenly thought killed her child and her heart was broken into pieces. So listen to me this morning. She came to the wrong conclusion because she got stuck in the why and tried to figure it out in her head. Some things are not understandable. Did you hear me? Some things are not understandable. Sometimes we reasonable, sane people try to figure out why unreasonable, not sane people do what they do, and it makes no sense. Well, it makes no sense because it makes no sense. There was no sense to it. 
When people are, are addicted to drugs and alcohol or yielding to demons or, or just messed up, they do unreasonable, illogical things to other people. They just do. You may not be able to figure it out. And the longer you try and the harder you try, the more chance there's going to be for you to come to the wrong conclusions and get messed up. Why? Because the devil is just waiting to tell you the, the reason that's most destructive to your faith that will hurt you the worst. Do you understand? Sometimes when we go to God, he can tell us why things happened, what their motivation was, how, how all that got set up. And sometimes he doesn't tell us. Aren't you glad God doesn't rat you out with all your business? But you can't get stuck in the why. Well, how could they how could they do this to me? I, I don't I don't understand. Why? But you can't get stuck there. You can't get stuck there. Because some things are not understandable. Some things you're never going to understand. And if you can't move on until you understand the why, you're in trouble. Understanding is not going to change what happens. And I do understand self-defense, self-nature says, if I can understand it, I can keep it from happening again. And maybe with that person you can. Maybe you just need to let them, let them go, let them go. Maybe, maybe you just need to let them go. But you're not always going to know the why. Because sometimes there isn't even a why. How many of you perfectly understand every one of your moods? Every one of your own behaviors? Why did I do that? How many ever said that? Why did I do that? If we can't even understand ourselves, knowing our own mind and hearts, how in the world do we think we're going to understand somebody else's? Leave it with God. Trust him to make it right by you, no matter what anybody else has done to you. If you feel like you got to control everybody else's behavior to protect yourself, you're going to drive yourself nuts because it can't be done. Someone once said to me, that's not fair. Life isn't fair. And I told them, you know what? That's true. Life isn't fair. But listen to me, God is just. And God can make it up to you. Life is not fair. But God is just. Give it to him and trust him to make it right by you. Even in a case where somebody didn't receive their healing and moved on to heaven before we wanted and needed them to, our hearts can be broken. Sometimes in that situation, the Lord may help us to understand why someone didn't uh, receive their healing uh, and they moved to heaven prematurely, but sometimes he doesn't. But whether he does or he doesn't, you can't get stuck there. Regardless of why it happened, it happened and, and it's done. If you keep going for the why, you're going to get messed up. Because the devil's going to slip you a Mickey. He's going to slip you a lie. It's going to hurt you. If it's not understandable, then just say, Father, I don't understand. I'm sure when I get to heaven, I'll be able to see clearly. But in the meantime, I trust you. 
This I know. This I can tell you from from life and from experience. Uh, you know, you can trust God. God is just. He's a good God, and his word is true, and he's here for you. And if you'll turn to him, even in the midst of your broken heart, he will heal you and bring you out of that. But if you get stuck there in the why, the enemy will gladly lie to you. Regardless of why it happened, you can know this. Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. He came to heal the brokenhearted. That means he came to heal you. Luke 4.18. This is Jesus speaking. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. I want us to look at that in the Amplified Classic. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, the anointed one, the Messiah, to preach the good news, the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to announce release to the captives. Listen to me. It's time for some of you to go free. It's time for some of you to go free. Listen, when you can let go of that, when you, when you got a hold of him, I'm, I'm like, you know, Pastor, I got a hold of him. If you can let go of that, you're going to be amazed at the freedom that comes into your own life and heart. He sent me to announce release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. To send forth as delivered those who are oppressed, who are downtrodden, who are bruised, crushed, and broken down by calamity. To proclaim the accepted and acceptable year of the Lord, the day when salvation and the free favors of God profusely abound. So let me ask you a question. What heals your broken heart? Does time There's a saying, time heals all wounds. How many of you know, in some cases, that's a lie? I happen to know 20 years after my parents divorced, my mama was still mad, still hurt, still devastated. Time doesn't heal all wounds. Does revenge? Ask the Hatfields and the McCoys. Somebody did something to somebody, and the other side retaliated. Then the other side retaliated. Then the other side retaliated bigger. Then the other side retaliated bigger. Before you know it, you got two whole families wiping each other out, and probably nobody can even remember how it started. I guarantee you there was broken hearts on both sides and worse ones that came with every blow. Will remorse fix it? Sorrow? No. Will depression fix it? No. So what heals your broken heart, or more properly, who heals your broken heart? Jesus. If Jesus is the healer of the broken heart, then why isn't our broken heart fixed? James 4, 2, you lust and have not, you kill and desire to have, and you cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not because you ask not. I want to focus in on the last part of that verse. You have not because you ask not. I want us to look again at Luke 
out of the King James. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Now beyond the broken heart part of this verse, how do we access the other things in this verse that Jesus came to do? If you're poor, he, the Bible says Jesus was anointed to preach the gospel to the poor. If you're poor, how do we access that anointing that was on Jesus to, to, to meet the needs of the poor? How do we do that? Number one, we ask him to supply all of our needs. Then by faith, we believe it. That he's done it, and we receive it, and it manifests in our life, right? He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. Listen, if you're held in bondage by addiction, by habits, by depression, by anything, that's holding you captive. The Bible says that Jesus is anointed to deal with that. So if you're being held captive and you want out, what do you do? You go to the Lord and you ask him to set you free. Then by faith you believe that he's done it and you receive it by faith and voila, you eventually walk free. Recovering of sight to the blind. How are the sick, the, the injured, the maimed, how are they healed? You ask him. Then you use your faith to receive what he's done. You believe it. You receive it into your life. And eventually uh, that which you received in here shows up in your flesh. So why do we think it's different when it comes to being brokenhearted and bruised? I am so grateful for God, just like a natural healing. How many of you know God wants you physically healed so badly? He's provided uh, dozens of different ways that you can get healed. You can get healed by the gifts of the Spirit. You can get healed by calling for the elders of the church and having them anoint you with oil. You can get healed on your own faith just by believing what he said and receiving it and believing you've got it now and it will eventually manifest in your body. There's a, there's a lot of ways that God has provided for you to receive healing of your body and there's a lot of ways he's provided to, for you to receive healing of your broken heart. Time is not one of them. Revenge is not one of them. Anger is not one of them. Bitterness is not one of them. I'm so grateful for what God did. Last Sunday night at our saturation meeting, laying on hands and imparting the anointing is one way we can get healed of a broken heart. I've heard some marvelous testimonies already of things that happened last Sunday night in people's minds and lives and hearts. But how else can you receive it? How many of you know you don't have past, need pastor to come to your house and lay hands on you every day? What do you need? You access it the same way that you access everything else in that verse. You ask him for it. Father, Father, this thing that happened, you saw, you know what it's done to my heart and to my life. Now, Father, I'm asking you for help. I'm giving this situation and I'm giving this person to you. And I trust you to deal with them. I trust you, Father, that no matter what happened, no matter how this occurred, 
I'm going to let go of it, and I know I can trust you to make things right by me. Now, Father, I'm asking you to heal my broken heart. And, Father, because I know you're not a man that you should lie, because I know that your word is true, because I know that you are faithful, you are faithful to your word and to me, then I believe if I ask anything in your name, you're going to do it. So I choose to believe that you are healing my broken heart. doesn't matter how I feel. I choose to believe that you're healing my broken heart. And I receive that healing into my life right now. In Jesus' name. Now listen, if you've let anger and hatred and bitterness in, you're going to have to deal with that first. Because we looked at it last week. That will get you in sin. You're not in a place to receive all the blessings of God when, when you're in sin. So we got to deal with that first. And... and uh, he came to heal the brokenhearted. Jesus is the healer of the broken heart. So what happened to the lady in the mental institution? I did not forget my story. The minister was able to convince her to forgive herself. Girl, you were so young. You just need to let that go. Count it as a terrible decision when, from the young and let it go. He was able to convince her to forgive everybody else involved and convince her that her anger at God was misplaced. But listen, as she forgave herself, as she forgave her boyfriend, as she forgave both sets of parents, and as she forgave God, he said, when she finished praying, we said, now, Lord, I'm asking you to heal her broken heart. He said the presence of God moved into that room right there in the middle, the psych ward. And he said God ministered to that woman visibly. She was weeping. The peace of God came all over her. He said, I watched her countenance changed. I watched that depression lift off of her. In a matter of weeks, she was released from that mental institution and was able to return to her normal life, which she is living to this day. When she forgave and let go of the hurt, then all the garbage that came with it, the depression, the despondency, the hopelessness, it all broke off of her at the same time. Why? Because that root wasn't there to hang on that allowed that stuff to come. Because listen, when you're in anger and bitterness and unforgiveness and you get yourself in sin, that opens the door for the devil to pile on his junk. The Bible says where there's strife, there's confusion and every evil work. When you get stuck in anger and bitterness and blame is signing, then the enemy has access into your heart because now you're the one in sin like we looked at last week. When you get that broken heart fixed and you forgive, all that the enemy has added goes away too. Now listen, I was praying last night and the Spirit of God spoke to me. And I know by the Spirit of God, I don't know if it's this service or next, and it doesn't even matter. If it applies to you, you take it. The Lord told me there's a man going to be in service here this morning. Something happened with your father when you were a young boy. I don't know that it was, you know, to the level of molestation. I don't know what happened. Uh, but whatever happened, he broke your heart. Something you've not gotten over to this day. And it's affected your entire life. 
and there's some things that you're trying desperately to get free from. But listen, it's that, it's that anger and bitterness on the inside of you that's allowing that thing to stay in your life. You've got to forgive him for what he did to you. Not for his sake, but for yours. Because God wants to set you free. God wants to set you free. Do you know that broken heart syndrome is a real medical condition that affects your physical heart, your blood pumping heart, not just your emotional heart? According to a website on health from Harvard University, broken heart syndrome is a weakening of the left ventricle, the heart's main pumping chamber, usually as a result of severe emotional or physical stress, such as a sudden illness, the loss of a loved one, a serious accident, or a natural disaster, such as an earthquake. What is my point? You cannot keep your broken heart. Please hear me. The compassion of God is so welled up on the inside of me for you right now. If we had time, I'd walk up and down the row and hug every one of you. Whatever it is that's caused your broken heart, you can't keep it. It's too destructive to you. It's poison mentally, physically emotionally, spiritually. Time won't fix it. Anger won't fix it. Revenge won't fix it. Only Jesus can fix it. Listen, you've got to forgive everybody involved. Then give them in that situation to the Lord. Ask the Lord for forgiveness, for holding on to it. And then ask him to heal your broken heart. And believe that he's going to do it. Receive it by faith before you feel anything different. And he will heal your broken heart. You know, last quarter, I, I have a class on Love Walk in First Year Bible Institute. And I spend six weeks talking about offenses, how to get them out of your heart, how to keep them out to begin with, but how to get them out if they've been in there. At the end of the class, I tell the story from Corey Ten Boom. She and her family hid Jews during Nazi Germany. She ended up in a, a concentration camp. Her and all of her family got arrested. And all of her family died there. All of her family died there. All of her family died there but her. She was released by accident two weeks before they killed all the women of her age. After the war, she became a mighty preacher. She was in Germany preaching about how God forgives because she said it was the message they most needed to hear in that bombed out land. She said as she finished her sermon, uh, and she was about to dismiss. She said she saw him walking towards her. She said, one moment I saw the man in his brown suit and his brown felt hat clutched in his hand. The next minute I saw him in his SS uniform with his visored cap with the skull and the crossbones with a whip on his hip that he used to beat us with. And she said, making the way towards me was one of the most cruel guards from that concentration camp. And she said he came up towards her. And he said, sister, how wonderful it is to hear that God has forgiven me. I was a guard at, I think it was Ravensbrook, prison concentration camp. She said, at least he didn't remember me. Because she said they took our clothes and made us walk naked past this guard and the other guards 
She said, I remembered the humiliation. I remembered my sister's uh, frame ahead of me in that line, her bones so visible beneath her parchment thin skin as she was dying. She said, he, he continued to talk. Since the war, I've become a Christian. And I know that God has forgiven me. But my question to you, sister, is, can you forgive me? And he stuck out his hand to shake my hand. She said, I couldn't do it. She said, I grabbed my purse and acted like I was looking for a tissue or something. She said, Lord, how can I take that hand? How can I forgive this man? My daddy died there. My sister died horrible death. And all of that can be erased just for the asking. But she said even as she fumbled in her purse, she knew she had to do it. Because she ran a home for victims of the concentration camps after the war. She said, I knew I had to forgive, not just from the scriptures, but I'd seen it in, 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 in real life. She said, those who were able to forgive were able to go free and rebuild their lives regardless of their external scars. Those who refused to forgive and nurse their bitterness remained invalids. She said it was just as awful as that. She said, I, who only moments before had glibly spoken about forgiveness, was struggling so hard to do the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. She said, Father, I can raise my hand. I'm willing, but you're going to have to do the rest. So she said, woodenly, mechanically, I thrust my hand into his. She said, the voltage started in our joined hands. It raced up my arm and into my body. And she said, the most healing warmth of God came all over my body. She said, I have never known the love of God as much as I did in that moment. And she said, his presence just melted it all away. She said, I forgive you, my brother. With all of my heart, I forgive you. Now listen, if she could forgive, you can forgive. If God could heal her broken heart, he can heal your broken heart. And I want you to listen to me. You can't hang on to it any longer. I don't care if it does make you feel powerful. It's killing you. It's killing you. And no, they don't deserve it. They don't deserve it, but you're not doing it for them. You're doing it for you.